All right, so by a show of hands, nice and high here, who here has listened to a whale sing before? Probably everyone, right? Most people describe their songs as relaxing or mysterious. Well, I have listened to over 1,600 hours of marine mammals vocalizing underwater in the last two years, and I still find it amazing. All marine mammals use vocalizations underwater where darkness limits their visibility. These sounds can travel hundreds of miles throughout the ocean because sound travels about five times faster in water than it does in air. And this allows marine mammals to communicate over these vast oceans. Now marine scientists like myself have learned to eavesdrop on these conversations by making recordings underwater. And then we can use these to track where marine mammals go. So underwater microphones record the animals singing and then we figure out where and when animals are likely to be present based on their calls. But if we do wanna make really accurate uh, population estimates for these animals, we need to understand what drives their vocal activity. So my thesis focused on trying to understand how environmental variables like daylight influence the vocal activity of marine mammals, particularly in the Arctic. I focused on three species, which you can see in the photos on the left-hand side. My left, your left. Um, so we've got bowhead whales at the top, bearded seals in the middle, and walruses at the bottom. The reason I chose these three species is because they vocalize quite often, so they're easy to detect, but also because they are very important for indigenous peoples around St. Lawrence Island, Alaska, which is where our recordings were made. So there have been previous studies that have shown that marine mammals correlate their vocal activity with daylight before, but to date no studies have done this for the northern Bering Sea and Bering Strait region, which is where I was studying. The Northern Bering Sea and Bering Strait region is really important because it is becoming really busy with human activity. So as climate change causes ice to melt in this area, new shipping lanes are opening for commercial trade in the region. The Bering Strait in particular, which you can see in the map just between Russia and Alaska there, is a very narrow and it's the only passageway between the Pacific Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. So marine mammals that are migrating have to go through this route, but so do ships. So you end up with this hot spot where dangerous collisions, even fatal for animals, can happen if whales and ships are overlapping. So in order to protect this fragile ecosystem, we really need to understand as soon as possible how these animals are using the habitat. Now, amazingly, technology has advanced to allow us to not only hear sound, but also to be able to see sound. So this is an image of what's called a spectrogram. It's a visual representation of sound. And here what you can see is a bearded seal, and it's a male, and he is doing a trill call, and he's trying to attract females with it. By tracking these sounds, you know, this is a very obvious shape. We can find it in our recordings. So I went through 20,000 spectrograms like this. They were about five minutes in length, and I was looking for marine mammals. And when I find the marine mammals calling in those regions, I mark them as present or absent. And then I can use this information to create a statistical occupancy model, which helps me to predict where and when marine mammals will be present in this region. So the results for my occupancy model showed that bearded seals do correlate their calling with daylight. And if these male bearded seals are trying to attract females by calling during the day, an increase in daily shipping traffic might drown out or mask their calls, which could limit their ability to breed. So from a conservation perspective, it's really under important to understand what drives their vocal activity because it gives us an idea of how resilient these animals will be to the human dimensions of climate change. Bowhead whales had a negative relationship with daylight, so they call more at nighttime. And previous studies have shown that they also do this on their um, more northern breeding grounds in the summer where there's a lot more sunlight. And so if they're calling at night then also, it shows that my results are an extension of this knowledge that we have. Walruses, which are on the left, which are all those tiny little pink blobs that you see lying along the beach there, they also had a uh, higher correlation with their calling with nighttime. Now, because they do this haul out behavior, they've been shown to do this for longer than 24 hours in previous studies, and so that gives us an idea that maybe they don't actually have any daily routines. But these animals do spend the majority of their time around St. Lawrence Island, our study region, at nighttime. 
um, because they're there in the winter, there's not very much sunlight in the Arctic. So this is probably a more realistic um, explanation for my results. So understanding how marine mammals vocalize gives us some insight into their animal behavior as well as their resilience to climate change and the increases in human activity in the Arctic that will come along with that. So my research contributes to an ongoing study with the Wildlife Conservation Society as well as the US Coast Guard and they're trying to determine where to put new shipping lanes in the region uh, and they don't want them to overlap with marine mammals. So on the graph on the side, you see that there are the yellow lines. Those are the proposed shipping lanes. So we're contributing to that study. This is particularly important for indigenous peoples in the regions, as I mentioned earlier, because they rely heavily on these animals as a source of food security as well as cultural symbolism. And that is why I listen to whales sing. Thank you. Thank you.